Hold on. Facebook show you can record. She's recording. All right. Fazan Bear, everyone, please mute yourself. We'll see you when you Sorry. talk. Let's see how it works. Including us. Let's see. Hold on. Dina, tell us when. We're good. You guys are all set. Fantastic. So someone asked me a question about this hat. I've been a foodie and actually um, uh, a chef for, for a very, very long time. This hat was given to me um, when I worked at the Dix Hills Jewish Center. I was the chef for the annual nursery school barbecue. And so I have the hat to prove it. Yeah. In case none of you are really sure what we're, you know, what we're cooking, it's this. <laughs> it's this, we're cooking fish, and, um, uh, but even if you don't like gefilte fish, you're going to like this gefilte fish. So, let's go to work. Oh, explain where you are. Huh? Explain where you are. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, thank you. So, um, I, I'm very lucky to be at the Wasserman home. They made, there's, <laughs> there's Ellen saying hi. Um, and um, my, my, uh, my tablet was not cooperating this morning and I had to make sure that you got this, uh, you got this session. We're gonna have a lot of fun and any of you who are making it, never, you're not gonna be able to taste it immediately after. But I promise, if you're making it along with me, tomorrow you're going to be very, very happy with the results. Okay, so first things first. We have three loaves of gefilte fish. Let's put this away. Yep. Two of them are plain, like plain. One is salmon. All right. What I've done is they have to be thawed out. You cannot do anything with them unless they're defrosted completely. And what I've found is that they don't have to be ice cold. You know, they just have to be thawed out. That's it. They, don't, they shouldn't be room temperature either. So what I'm gonna, we're going to start with is I'm going to open them up. And then, see, they come in this paper wrapper. So what I'm gonna have Ellen do is very simply um, to take this out. Ellen is my sous chef. He's putting me to work. Putting her to work. And we gave yeah. Ellen the night off. <laughs> so um, take it out and um, you can put it in your mixing bowl or you really could have just went, you know what, I wanna, I wanna, wanna get yeah, let's scrape, scrape the sides. Go ahead, I'm gonna let you, you're doing the work. Right, scraping the sides. Scraping the sides. One moment. Okay. Did you get it all in there? Nope. All right. Nope, nope, nope. Now, while Ellen is doing that, I'm going to take the springform pan, springform pan with a removable bottom, and I'm going to pam it. That's P-A-M, Pam it on the bottom with a nice heavy coat and some on the sides too. Where did Ellen scrape that into and put it when she took it out of the wrapper? Because we could only see your face into a bowl. Okay. Into a bowl. Sorry. The truth is, the truth is you don't have to put this first layer into a bowl. It's not really necessary, but we did. Anyway, so Ellen, what I want you to do is to empty that into the springform pan. All right. Okay. Let me show them how it looks. Hold on a second. I'll show everybody how it looks. Here's this. Hold on. Oh wait, my hands are fishy. Let me wash them a second. My hands are not fishy. So I'll show you. This is what it is. It's just a loaf in the middle there. But what you do, we have, I have a special spatula. Oh, you can show you a special spatula. I'm a, this is what gives it Tom and spice, and you know that it comes from Cantor Bear. Does everybody see? Pop All right. 
So Ellen's going to use this Papa Bear spa spatula, and you're going and we're going to spread it around. Now it's somewhat more soft now because it's been out. Moshe, Moshe, sorry to interrupt. Did you have to spray that pen first? Yes, oh, no. I did. I did. I absolutely did. did. So Ellen, I want you to spread this out throughout the pan, all the way to the edges. Very important. Spread it out. It's not going to be very, it won't look very thick, but you pan the thing with a heavy, nice, heavy coat. Mm -hmm. If you don't have a spatula, you can use the back of your spoon, but you definitely want to spread it all the way to the edge. And um, <laughs> it'll take some, it'll take just a moment. Nope, not enough. Okay, so, so you want to try to make it as an even layer if you can. And, um, and what will happen is you take, you just kind of bring it, bring what's in the center that's thick out to the edges and sort of make it so it's really sort of even up against the edges. And I'll show you, I'll show you, I'll give you a look. as best as you can and then let's see this is not does everybody see that why am i so bad with the camera don't worry about it hold on i got it just work it to the work it out to the edges here okay so it's pretty even do you see what i'm doing here everybody good i'm assuming that's that they see yes now now that we've done this first layer, this is my addition to Susie Fishbein's um, wonderful recipe. Hold on. I don't want to miss anything. And I, um, I had recommended some ground macadamia nuts. I'm going to get them. I do this for a little bit of texture. Macadamia nuts don't have a lot of flavor. I mean, they're rich, but I just spread it around. And I top this first layer with macadamia nuts. Okay, pat it out. It's optional, you don't have to do this. Now. Oh, wait, Kazan, I'll ask a question. Can yeah. you use any other nuts but macadamia nuts? You can, but They'll, they'll add a flavor. So maybe ground almonds, but they're going to add more of a flavor. So macadamia nuts, you said, don't really have much of a flavor. That's correct. They add a certain richness and a little bit of texture. Something that I learned recently is that I'm going to take this. Can you see it now? Yep, everybody can see it. I'm going to take this and I'm going to put it in the refrigerator while we prepare the next layer. That's important because... I hope there's room. <laughs> well, there's room in here. Yeah. Okay. You want me to make room? I'll make room. I got it. You got it. Okay. So the reason that I'm putting it in the fridge while I'm making the next one is that um, um, is that I sort of wanted to set and become more than just um, uh, soft, okay? So the next thing I do is I break out the salmon layer. And this I'm gonna put in another bowl, an under the bowl. That's close enough. Now, in this bowl, in this bowl, I'm gonna add shredded carrots. Now, what I did was I bought the shredded carrots and then I ran them through the food processor. Whoops, that's not true. Ran them through the food processor, processor to make them sort of granular. Can you see this? See that? Yep. Yep, throwing them in. And 
if you want uh, other further redness or, or, you know, red color, you can add peppers, you know, uh, you can do whatever you like. But this is really nice. Alan, let's get reset here. Okay. And I'm going to let you mix again, okay? Well, actually, I, I have another question. Uh, how yeah. finely do you shred carrots? I couldn't see from here. Is it oh. uh, a regular shredder side or it's yeah. fine shredder? Nah, I would, a regular shredder is fine. Okay, Just thank the, you. And, um, and mix, 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 mix until it's thoroughly mixed. Ellen, I'm going to make you mix. Go mix. Okay. I mean, really thoroughly mix it. And, it, um, and of course, in addition to, now Susie Fishbein doesn't do this. Sometimes what I've done in the past is um, I have, um, I've just put that uh, as, a, as a layer on top of the salmon. But the truth is, I, I think I like it mixed in. It, it makes a nice red color and it's a little extra, a little extra, a um, little extra nutrition. So what do you think, look good? Everybody see? So that's the salmon gefilte. Oh, it's dripping. Salmon None. gefilte with the carrot mixed in. All right. Now we'll take out. I could be kidding. You want to add more carrots or not? Um, up to you. We do have the other carrots if you want. Yeah, you know oh, what? We could do what you said and put a layer. Whatever you want. No, that's that's good. That, this is this, this is, is going to be fine. Yeah. Okay. Now, so guess what we're doing now? We're gonna, Ellen, I want you to, let's put the layer on here, on top, pull your, um, pull your. Okay, remember we have the fish with the macadamia. Plain with macadamia, and now, and now salmon. Now salmon. And it'll be um, a little easier to spread. If both of them were the same temperature, uh, you could have leakage between the layers. So work it out. Work it from the center to the sides. Just keep working it. Just want you all to know it smells really good in my house right now. Um, and we haven't even started cooking. I have a question, Hazen Bear. What, yes, dear. what uh, was the first fish that you used? First, the first fish um, was regular, just a loaf of regular gefilte fish. Regular gefilte fish. Yeah, Plain. but what kind of fish is it? Oh, no. Uh, okay, we can read the ingredients. You want to know what's in it? Let's see. This I bought from Aaron, Aaron's, and um, white fish and or mullet, fresh eggs, onions, matzo meal, sugar, salt, soybean oil, water, anything that, that yields a white, a more traditional look of gefilte fish. See it? And there are all different kinds there. You can have some with no sugar, some with no eggs. Much better than the first time. All right, so look, let's give a look and you'll see how nice this is. Hold on, everybody, give me a sec. Okay, there you go. You see it, everybody? Second layer. And you know what, while we're at it, I'm gonna pan them up the sides. All right. This goes back in the refrigerator. <laughs> Wanted to set. What? It was much easier now, right? Much easier. Yeah. Stay in there. Now for the last one, this is this is the green layer, and it's a potchka, which is. Um, it's a, just a little bit more, it's fun to, fun to make. Watch what we do, hold on. Now we're putting another plain layer in. Ellen, I'm gonna ask you, no, you know what, I'll, I'll do this. I'm going to just scrape the sides here. Mm -hmm. I 
I came from a I came from a home in which you didn't waste anything. Not anything, anything. So we can use the same bowl that we used the first time, because the first time we used it as white. And then the second bowl we used for the orange, but now we can go back to the first bowl because now we're gonna make that one green. And the truth is, if you wanna wash the bowl between times and you don't wanna say, get a second bowl, you're going to hey, you can wash the bowl. Now, okay, give me a second, let me wash my hands. Now the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna flavor this and color it. Watch how we do this. The first thing I'm gonna do is to take a lemon, a nice whole lemon. I have never used, I don't know if I have ever used um, bottled lemon juice. Just, I like the taste of fresh lemon. I'm putting it in here. We're gonna get all the juice out we can. There's not a lot of juice in that lemon. Ah, Thanks. that is on the other side. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna, well, hold on. It's, um, we got more juice in this lemon, lots more. Oh, there you go. I heard that. Well, yeah. that's only half the lemon. Do we do a whole lemon? I do a whole lemon. And you can, and if you want, you can squeeze a little more out. No, but but not any of the seeds. That's not good. Not cool. A trick I learned is that you should put the lemon out of the refrigerator a couple hours earlier because that lemon was cold. I think that also makes it a little difficult. It does, but, um, and certainly you can kind of press it and roll it a little bit mm -hmm. to, uh, to extract a little bit more of the, you know, break it down on the inside and extract more of the juice. So we're so first things first, or in Hebrew as we would say, kodim kol and first of all. So <laughs> that's Jewish. So squeezing out the juice of the lemon, we'll put you over there with your other stuff. Bye bye lemon. Yeah. Oh, next. question for you. Yeah. After we were done with the salmon. We did not put macadamia nuts again. Correct. Okay. Nope, nope. Now, the next thing you put in is your chopped dill. Yeah, what did I say? Uh, two tablespoons. Mm -hmm. You can put in more if you want. Um, even if it's just two tablespoons, it will give it a light green color. If you want a nice green color, and mamish really some delicious uh, flavor, dump it. And along with that, same thing with scallions. Chop fine. Don't put the label in. <laughs> Although, label is a Jewish name too. And now, what you do is... You ever put in spinach as a coloring? What? Top spinach to color the green layer? Uh, you could you could put chopped spinach in. However, I think that that will create um, a, a flavor that, I mean, try it. But I don't think it'll, uh, have you ever had spinach with gefilte fish? I just don't know that it'll, I think that spinach will uh, will take away from the, you know, from, from the rest of the fish. Um, now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean off this Cancer. cup of air spatula. And Canta. Canel's going to mix. Oh. Is there a question for Canta Bear? No, I just wanted to tell him that I make a similar version of it, and I use spinach in one of the layers. Oh. It's great. I use one layer with spinach. I use the middle layer plain, and I use the top layer with carrots, canned carrots that are smashed. Okay. There. And I freeze between each layer. I freeze it so that yeah. each layer is hard, and then when you put the second layer on, it's very yeah. easy to get on. It, rather than freeze it, because 
my my concern and listen the truth is at the end of the day it all comes out delicious right bonnie yeah you, you, it's a no you can't ruin it so um the reason i don't freeze it is that once fish is already frozen not great for the texture to to refreeze it i don't that's what i no, no it's just saying. frozen for a couple of minutes until it sets to oh, put okay. the next well, layer on so it doesn't mush from one layer to the next that's what I had said earlier. But instead of freezing it, uh, that's actually not a bad idea. Right. But instead of freezing it, I just put it in the fridge. It's enough. Um, it's enough to sort of set it. Okay, Ellen, are you? Uh, are you? Let's let we're mixing thoroughly, thoroughly mixing yep. because this late because and you'll see it's really neat. And the lemon, the lemon of course keeps it nice and white and bright and uh, and has that lovely bright citrus flavor okay i'm taking oh. out moshe sorry may i show you what i got is it okay show me let me where are you gotta find you i'm right here irene Ochner. Ooh, that's very green yeah good for you that looks that looks kosher too um <laughs> <laughs> looks great two, spoons, two tablespoons of dill yeah what Two tables, two tablespoons of dill, I put. You can, yes, and you can put more if you like. No, you it, it's pretty green. It and, yeah. you, and the same thing for scallions. I kind of like that, that scallion taste. But the, the, basic, uh, the basic recipe uh, from Susie Fishbein was just dill to color. One moment. Um, I want to ask Bonnie. Bonnie, when you said that you um, added spinach and carrots. You added it to the fish or you added it in the, as a lay? Like, what did you do with them? Bonnie? Bonnie. Bye. We're, we're gonna put this next layer on. Right, Ellen? Yeah. Yes, spread it, spread it good. Can you hear me, Ellen? Now I can, go ahead. Yes, I put it in the fish. In the fish, spinach and canned carrots, you said. But canned right. carrots in, in one of the layers. In the but the canned carrots, I smash it up. Did you put the canned carrots in the salmon layer? No, I don't use salmon. I use all three regular fish. They oh. might people oh, don't like a, the salmon. Okay, all right, that's a, that's a different twist. Right. That's very, very nice, okay. And, but the color comes out beautiful anyway, right? It's gorgeous. It's one complete orange. The plain is, uh, the middle is totally plain fish and the top is totally green. Beautiful, beautiful. I got to try that sometime. So you don't even buy salmon at all. You, no. buy, you just buy plain and you just color them with, with nature's bounty. Very nice. Very nice. Yeah. All right. Good. Very nice. Now, this is what we do. You're gonna take a piece of aluminum foil and you're gonna cut. Dude, let's let's pan around the edges. Oh, and we forgot to tell them what the, the oven was preheated. Oven was preheated to 350. That was in your in your directions. We're gonna put we're gonna put this uh, tin foil. Tin foil. Excuse me. Well, aluminum foil. And it's gonna go into the oven. Now. That's it, covered nicely. And I would suggest you put this, that you put this on a, on a, a baking sheet, because it'll leak a little bit. Oh, well, that's why the baking sheet. That's right. And if you don't, and if you really don't want to clean up, you can put, uh, what do you call it? You can put, oh, this is not. Not this, big enough? Not big enough, big enough. All right, this could fail off. Um, you can put some tin foil around it. Moshe, what right. about those cucumbers? Yeah, they're coming, they're coming in a minute. Okay, we're going to go in. As a matter of fact, let's, let's take that, where's the other one? It's right there. Well, do you want me to put this one, hold on. You want me to put this one in the oven? Yeah, in the, in the pan there, I think that would be good. I got a bigger pan. So, automatically, put that, you can put that on there, that's all right. But we're gonna put this in here. 
and put this in the oven. Put that in the oven, please. And now I'm going to show you what this looks like. Hold on one second. Let me, let me, uh... Ellen wants to see. <laughs> no, I want to show everybody. All right. How long does it go in the oven? Like... So you're going to leave it in the oven for one hour. At the end of an hour, you're going to take, very important, you're going to take the aluminum foil cover off and let it go for another five, max 10 minutes. You want to be sure that the top is set, that you feel the fish is set. And you can do that with like you would with any cake, you know, dip it in, make sure. But it, I always let mine go uncovered for another five, 10 minutes. If you're making a lot more, in other words, if you're using a loaf and a half because you want to feed an army, then it'll probably have to go a little longer because it's just more space. So here we go. Wait, We're hold on. Let me get one. Yep. And this is the finished product after it comes out of the oven. Out of the oven. And I'm going to unmold it. See how this comes off? And because of the pan, I'm lifting it up, coming right out. Isn't this nice? That's cool. And we're gonna put it on a nice presentation plate for now. Now, if for some reason the sides are brown, you can just, you know, sort of cut them off. Now, we're not finished. More decoration. This is fun, fun, fun. <laughs> The first thing we're going to do, tell me, what are the requirements of a kosher fish? It has to have what? A kosher fish? A kosher fish. For a, a fish scales. to be kosher. Scales. It has scales. to have scales on it. Scales. Scales. That's right. And that's what we're going to do. Take a look at this now. I sliced up very thin rounds of cucumber. And the best way to do that, unless you're good with a knife or have a, uh, a slicing attachment, is with a mandolin. Paper thin slices. And I'm going to put them, watch, I'm putting them all around the top of the cake. Hmm. See that? Beautiful. I hope I have enough. I've so, got, I got six cucumbers. We'll have enough. Okay. <laughs> Isn't this fun? <laughs> it looks so elegant. Anybody who sees this will say, oh, definitely Yuntif. It is beautiful. I'm having a good time. Okay. Beautiful. All those scales that fit. I declare oh, that fit. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Looks good. Now, in just a moment, you're gonna, we're going to slice it up, and you're going to see how beautiful this really is. But before we do that, we're going to take cucumbers, and we're going to make a further elegant presentation like the following. Show what he's doing. I'm cutting wells for, for cucumbers, out of the cucumbers, and these wells are going to hold our horseradish. So uh, let's say something like this big, two to a, a good three inches, yes. Let's start with these. And um, 
if you have a melon baller or something like that, you can cut out uh, little holes out of the out of the cucumber in the middle here. Oh, so you leave it like is it like a cup? It's like yeah, a cup. That's exactly right. Oh. You have a smaller spoon, maybe. Uh, I you want me to go get. It. I'll get it. Okay, like a teaspoon. Yes. Here you go. Yeah, thank you. Just, just put it down there. So if you don't have, if you don't have a grapefruit spoon or a or a melon baller, all you have to do is cut a little hole out of the top, not all the way through, but a little hole, and um, and use a regular teaspoon. You see what I'm doing here, mm -hmm. everybody? Everybody see? I think everybody does. One more. Can you all see? All right, now. Here's my host right here. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Now, it said in there mayonnaise, and you can do, you can indeed do mayonnaise a little bit with the horseradish. Let me show you what it looks like. But first, I'm going to put horseradish in these wells. Okay? That's cool. I'm going to put in two. And the other two, is that good? Beautiful. The other two, I'm going to show you kind of what it looks like, um, or one of them anyway, with mayonnaise. All right? Mayonnaise is at the end of the table. Yeah, I see it. The value, the, the, the thing with mayonnaise is that it kind of gives it, and you don't need much at all, but it gives it the consistency, more of the consistency of a sauce. You know, it looks like a, and it, and it lightens it a little. Oops. <laughs> and it makes it pinker. Yes. Probably got a little bit too much um, of the horseradish, um, what do you call it, water juice in here, but that's all right. It's pretty forgiving. Mm. A little lighter. That's good. This is a little bit lighter, and um, if you're using triple strong horseradish that's red, um, if you're using that, then it's, um, it keeps it pretty strong. Now, watch how this looks. We're going to put this on a plate, right? Mm -hmm. And then, all right, are you folks ready? I'm excited. <laughs> We're going to go in with a wedge as Emerald would say. Look at the side here. Wait, I got to show the side. Hold on. Hold on. Oh my God, look how beautiful that is. And I'm telling you, people who don't like, um, who don't like your filter fish will love this. Oh boy. 
we say that stuff gets in your mouth. It's pretty yummy. So now, what kind of questions do you have? What kind of wine do you serve with it? Oh, no, a white wine. But if it's Pesach, you can serve whatever wine you love, whatever you like. <laughs> this is, um, as long as the rolls say that they're kosher to Pesach, everything else that makes it parva, isn't that neat? That is so beautiful. Um, everything else makes it parva, you know, and um, and it's a perfect accompaniment. And um, these three loaves will serve yeah, ten to twelve people. Think maybe What is that? Riesling pino could be oh, so absolutely. many sorts. What would you prefer? Um, a Riesling would be incredible with this. That's Any kind of a Riesling would be incredible. Um, or any, I mean, it's, right. it's, this one hey, happens to be sweet. Hey, Moshe, I have a question. Yeah. On, uh, on the wells at the end, you put two of them, you put a uh, horseradish and two mayonnaise, you don't put them together, right? No, 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 it's either or, sorry. It's either or, either just plain horseradish or if you want a little um, uh, something saucier, you, you can put a little mayonnaise. I would just put um, um, triple uh, strong horseradish. Okay, one other question. What is the name of that original pot? I, don't, I, don't, I never heard of that pot that you made that's the first. Oh. oh, that's called a spring form pan with a removable bottom. Now, the, the, um, you, this is a pan in which you would make um, uh, a cheesecake, for example, because you can kind of unmold it and it's dip. You don't have to worry, is it going to stick to the sides? Because it's not going to stick to the sides. But we pay them just to, just to make sure. Spring form Pam. Spring form Pam. If you forget, you know where I work. <laughs> okay. One other question. What? Wait, wait, wait. wait. I had one. Bear? Oh, my God. Uh, ask the question. Can't you bear? Forget yes. Put it when the one's on there. You put it in the oven. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I, but, but I made one beforehand to show you how to, um, uh, how to, how to decorate it. You're muted. George Ann, you're muted. Okay. You said I you put, put you just put ask it, a question. Just wait a minute. You put it in the oven, right? Yes, so I did. It, I but, want the at what temperature? 350 for okay. one hour, for one hour, and okay. then, and then uncover it for five to 10 more minutes, okay, pull it out. Ah, very important, pull it out and then let it cool and then refrigerate it. Okay. So it takes, Do you turn, it off the temperature, turn off the oven when you let it cool inside for 10 or 15 minutes or okay. you stay out? Oh, you can leave, it, no. you leave it the oven on, it doesn't matter. Okay. okay. But, yeah. All right. One but more you question. have to let it cool first and then refrigerate it. Beautiful. One more question. That lemon squeezer, it's a, it, where do you get that? It's a lemon squeezer? I've never seen them. Yeah, you get it in a store. Mm -hmm. I got mine probably in Bed Bath & Beyond or Target. Yeah, right. yeah they, they sell them in all kinds of places. And since, I, you put mac, since you put macadamia nuts in it, is this a Hawaiian kafilta fish? No. <laughs> <laughs> there are no bears in Hawaii. Except do, you have, do you have to say mahalo? <laughs> no, the only thing you hollow out is the little bit of the cucumber. Okay. Now, I have the most important question, and my question is, can I taste it? Oh, yeah, please. Duh, hello. I already got the fork. Please. Ellen is the taste tester. Well, and you can put... Tasting, Deborah Bromwich had a question. Yes. And she wanted to know, if you're making it in advance, is there anything you would want to wait to make on the day of? if you're gonna refrigerate the loaf in advance? Well, once you, the great thing is that once you're done with it, it will keep for several days, really, in the fridge, just that way. So um, what, so the thing that I normally make at the end would be um, uh, 
would be the, to slice the, um, I'll slice the, the, uh, the cucumber and put it on at the end. If okay. I'm potching around and making the, um, and the getting cups. fancy with this, with the, with the horseradish wells, I'll do that at the end. Okay, but, thank But that's one of the great things about this, you know, especially if you're, if you're cooking for Pesach, you can make this several days in advance and just chill it and it'll be nice and ready um, and a surprise for everybody when it comes out. I don't have another question. I have a, a short comment. Yes. Uh, I just remembered how my grandmother, one of my grandmothers, and my mother-in-law made it. And it was a recipe for four hours stretched, but then she cooked it from the scratch. Your recipe is enjoyable, easy, <laughs> fast, comparing to them. I'll try to stick to that one because the old one, the real old one, old fashioned one, is oh, yeah. uh, way too long. Well, this takes a long time, but the amount of time that you're actually spending in preparation, we've talked a lot. I mean, it's what is it? The total is about 50 minutes total. Now, you have an hour to bake and then you have time to cool and all that stuff. Yeah. But, but the prep time, if you've done your prep a little bit in, you know, in advance, such as um, uh, grinding the carrots down, or you're shredding the carrots, or shredding the, grinding the macadamia nuts. Some of the stuff you can buy already done. Um, if you do that, then it takes really, it's a matter pretty much of assembling it, mixing and assembling it, cooking it, boom, 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 and then putting the, uh, the cucumber slices, um, cucumber slices on the top to make it look nice, Slice that bad boy up, and um, uh, and if you don't want to potch it with the cucumber wells, um, then just let people put as much uh, horseradish on as they can stand. It's good. It's delicious. <laughs> Does it taste like a filter fish, or really? Oh, it's excellent, and I like the crunch of the macadamia nut. So that's that's my thing. Now I put in there hemp seeds. Um, I didn't get my um, my <laughs> anymore. I didn't. So you can put other things in there. You can put like hemp seeds. Again, it's for a little a little bit of um, uh, a little bit of texture. That's me. That's what I like. Can I like you there? Can yes. Um, when you're going to put it in the refrigerator, what is the best thing to cover it with? Um, well, for, well, first of all, if you're putting it in the refrigerator, I would put it in, just leave the, uh, the tin foil on it. Just leave the tin foil on it and unmold it at the very end. Oh. Was that easy? Yeah, I mean, because you've got, you've got the aluminum foil on there in which to bake it. So just take it off. I mean, you know, that's, or you could put plastic wrap over it. I would, um, I would wait till the end to unmold it and, and serve it cold. Okay. Okay. If you're if you're doing that, then the Pam will still allow you to to take the sides off. Absolutely. Not the Pam is extra insurance. Most um, most springform pans that we see today are nonstick anyway. But that uh -huh. kind of that makes for even easier release. Yeah. Okay. All right. And I saw you. Uh, at one point when you were putting the, after you put the first layer in, before yes. you put the second layer in, you sprayed around with the Pam? Yeah, just a little extra. That way, because sometimes uh, Pam will, it won't cling to the sides. And so I just, uh, just for insurance, before so the next layer goes on. It doesn't mess up the flavor with the Pam. Nah, on. not at all. Pam, I used to use um, uh, olive oil, but Pam is easier. It's just better. It's cleaner. It's lighter. Do you know what I'm saying? It doesn't have to add any flavor to it. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I ate a lot. <laughs> Did you like it? I ate the whole piece. <laughs> so this is what it, I don't know if you can, oh. You want me to show you? There it is. Anyway, so I want to wish you all in advance a wonderful yonta. This, um, I'm telling you, it's, uh, it's pretty delish. And I'm going to have um, 
I'm going to have a slice and uh, myself this evening, and, and we're cooking another one. So, work, mm, work. Delicious. Cantor Bear. Uh, yes. Will you be coming back, Sukkot, to teach us how to make etrog jam? Oh, God. <laughs> I know that voice. That's a real potchka. That's, that's pretty exceptional. I was talking <laughs> with my son, Nathaniel, who, when I made it originally, used to be my helper. And he said, Papa, <laughs> we have to get together some Sukkot. And, um, OK, Robin, I'll bring you a taste. Um, we have to get together, and we have to do it so I know the recipe. It's, that's, um, that's a specialty of mine. I don't know of anybody else who makes it. Joyce Bullock. Thank God. Huh? <laughs> what? Thank God. Yes. <laughs> my Seattle, but what? Listen, it's the only thing that separates my sister from me. <laughs> yes. The first years that I made it, it tasted like furniture polish, but now it's gotten quite a bit better. I preferred the polish. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, T. I love you, T. <laughs> it's, uh, but it keeps, and if anybody, if any of you want to try it now, uh, it's, it really isn't quite so much a matter of who shall live and who shall die. I have to, it keeps a long time in the fridge. If anybody wants a taste of it, well, that's called the etrog jam? Yeah, the etrog eingemacht. It keeps Eingemach. a long time because nobody eats it. <laughs> no. Oh, look, Judy says your etrog jam is delicious. Oh, well, what? Tina, yeah, Judy says that my etrog jam is delicious. It so. must be an acquired taste. It is. <laughs> it's an acquired taste. I'll bring you some the next time I come. I just wanted to say, um, I had to buy a spring, what's this pan called? Spring form. I had to buy a spring form pan if anybody needed one. I went to Bed Bath & Beyond and with the 20% off coupon, I got it for $10. So that really was Did wasn't you get it. the three pack, Ellen? I did not. I still <laughs> had one. They only had. I got the three pack. Yeah, he got I have the three pack. <laughs> Oh my God. All right, well, Kazan Bear, I just want to thank you for teaching this. Everyone is so excited to try it at some point. I know you're going to bring it to Kiddush one day. Uh <laughs> <laughs> what is that day? What is that day? My fish is in the oven now. I'll try it in an hour, slowly. <laughs> I promise you tomorrow morning I'll, I'll let you know. Please right. do. Okay. I, I, Irene, you're going to love it. It's really, really delicious. Really All delicious. right. So I, thank I, you. I never shredded carrots so fast. <laughs> <laughs> so, Kazan Bear, thank you so much. Everybody, you'll get the email tomorrow with the video. But also, it'll be a reminder in that email letting you know that next weekend, because it's Labor Day weekend, we will be off. And we'll come back again on Sunday, September 13th. So Woo! thank you again, Fazan Bear. And My now pleasure. I'm going to thank you, Dina. Now I'm going to stop recording and all that fun stuff so we could chat. Dina, Dina, <laughs> Dina, yes. hold on one second. Can you hear me? Yes. Can I please just remind everybody that the Sisterhood's after happy hour is tomorrow night at eight o'clock? Absolutely. Yes. Everybody join Sisterhood tomorrow night. Bring your own drinks. Two truths and a lie. <laughs> I wish I yep. could do it. My piano lessons send like around eight thirty. I can't. Mondays, Mondays. Everybody, come Sunday. on. All right. All right, right everybody. You know what my two truths and a lie are. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks again to the Wassermans. Yeah. Thank you to the Wassermans. Thank you, Wasserman. Bear. Thank you. 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 Th